Hey guys, Mariam here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I am super stoked for today's video because I am loving the way that my makeup turned out using all of your makeup tips and tricks. I asked you guys on Instagram and also here in the community board to submit some of your favorite beauty makeup tips, tricks, and techniques. So I've picked them up, I've gathered them, I've compiled them, and I use them today for this video. I am super, super in love with the way that my makeup looks right now. I do have a wear test at the end of this video just to see how it wears after a long day of wear. Be sure to stick until the end. Thank you so much to those of you who have submitted your makeup tips and tricks. I am really, really excited for this video. I hope that we all learn together, grow together, and get a chance to share our love for beauty in this video. So thank you guys so much for watching and for subscribing. Let's get to this video. Okay, you guys, I have gotten a lot of submissions of your makeup tips and beauty tips and techniques and tricks, so I'm gonna be testing out as many as I possibly can in this video. Everything is going to be very unorthodox for me, including the order in which I apply my makeup, which I am actually so excited for because that's exactly what I wanted from this experiment. But the first tip that I have is for the smoky eye. I know, I typically never do my eyes before my foundation, but today we're doing just that. The tip is to put tape on the sides of the eye to apply eyeshadow slash smoky eye. I also got another tip, similar, but to also use under eye patches underneath the eye while applying eyeshadow. Thank you for your submissions. Let's try this. I think I'm gonna start out with the eye patches first. I'm gonna pick up the Pixi Beautify Brightening Eye Patches. This is from the Vitamin C line, which is why it's yellow on the top. Oh, so yummy. This is a makeup tip that I really, really love, and it's great not just for makeup, but also for skincare. Yeah. So instead of applying the wider side of the patch to the inner corner, I'm gonna apply the narrower side to the inner corner. That way it really gets a chance to catch that fallout on the outer portion where I'm smoking it out, but it's still providing the brightening and the eye cooling effect underneath the eyes. This is a tip that I myself have used before and it's kind of like a double duty technique that I love. This step, although I love it, is not something that I reach for often but I'm excited to do it today. Next up, let's take our tape. I just got regular tape. Mine is of course filled with cat hair and glitter and all types of nonsense so let me get a fresh piece. Now this is a trick that a lot of you guys might be familiar with. I'm just gonna pat it on the back of my hand so that it loses some of that tackiness and then I'm gonna place that tape. Ooh from my outer corner all the way to my temple. So kind of in this very straight edge fashion. And I'm also gluing down this under eye patch. This was a technique that was really, really popular when I first started blogging about six or seven years ago. I remember a lot of people were into that super straight edge outer corner. So we'll see, I'm all taped up, I'm all patched up, and I'm ready to begin my eyeshadow application. First and foremost, I'm gonna need my primer, Fancy Beauty as always. I'm gonna pat that out. Obviously, I'm not doing my eyebrows first. That's something that's tough for me just because I always always like to start with a border, with a frame for my eyes, but we're trying to be different today and we're trying to learn from each other. I'm gonna be open-minded and I hope you guys are too. For today's eyeshadow palette, I heard you guys loud and clear. A few of you wanted me to use Dose of Colors X Desi X Katie Frenkation palette. I have it right here and I'll be honest, it hasn't gotten a lot of use. I did review it on my channel when this palette first came out. It is a beautiful palette that I loved, so I'm excited to be dipping into it today. I also like the fact that it's got some really nice dark shimmery shades that will probably cause a lot of fallout, so I think this is the perfect palette for what I'm trying to accomplish today. So, let's begin. I'm gonna grab my Charlotte Tilbury Rock and Coal Eye Pencil in Bedroom Black, just because this shadow palette does not have a black, and I want a really nice dark outer V. Oh nice, now that I have the tape, I don't even have to worry about staying precise and within the lines. I know I'm within the lines, so that's great. Basically, I'm gonna draw an outer V shape, and then I'm gonna blend it out with this Motives Precision Crease Brush. Not worrying about staying precise here. Huh, did you see that guys? Did you catch that? I almost painted my face with this brush, but because I have my under eye patches and because I have my tape, my face was saved. All right, good enough as a preliminary step. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Next thing 
second thing I'm gonna do is pick up an eyeshadow. I'm gonna use my Sonia Kashuk trusty brush and I'm gonna go for this shade here. Just a really pretty warm brown sort of shade. I like using a brown for a smoky eye because it really helps to blur out the smoke. And all I'm doing here is just extending that really dark outer portion, bringing it inwards and blurring it in that border. Oh yeah. With the tape method, you can really play around with eyeshadow and you can go as crazy as you want because that edge is going to be so sharp, and so clean. It's basically a foolproof method. I kind of like the fact that this method allows me to be a little bit heavy handed or a little bit more heavy handed, I guess. So I'm not really so much worried about fallout. I'm not so much worried about clean, precise lines. I'm not really trying as hard as I would be had my foundation already been complete. I'm gonna take a little flat brush. This one is from Stilazzi and I'm gonna reach for this pink shade here, like a pale pink. I'm going to basically use that to clean up under the brow and create more of a transition and more of a brow bone so that it's not so harsh and so dark. I'm just packing it on and just whisking it away at the corner, keeping my other brush handy for blending. All right, good enough. Same thing here. I'm ready for this dark gunmetal blue. I'm gonna pick it up with the Sigma Exact Blend E32 and I'm gonna pack that on. I'm gonna pack that on with my finger instead. I feel like that'll just be the fastest and easiest method. I'm gonna apply that to the blank space of my lid, just like that. I've forgotten how gorgeous these shadows are. Applying that to the blank space all the way here. Yes. I'm gonna pick up another brush, a slightly smaller blending brush, Wayne Goss 04, and very, very gently, I'm going to blend the sparkles right here in the inner portion. And I'm gonna take an even more precise brush, Smudger and Liner from Lancome, and I'm gonna use that to get into those really, really tiny crevices in my inner corner, and also right here to just blend out further. I'm gonna look down into my mirror and just perfect. All right, great. I'm going to leave this alone for now and I'm gonna move on to the brows. I got a couple of tips about the brows. How about this one from Lily? I always do my brows with brow powder after blending it. I brush some translucent powder in them, then use brow gel. Cool, thank you for the tip. I am going to try that. Got a lot of brow tips. A lot of people said they prefer using eyeshadow instead of pencils. A lot of people recommended the foolproof brow powder, which I love. So we're gonna stick to this doll tan brow brush that I love. I'm gonna brush out those brows and let's see. Okay, so basically defining my brows with this foolproof brow powder by Benefit. Then I'm gonna add some translucent powder like Lily suggested. This, by the way, is my absolute favorite brow brush. I did talk about in my brushes video, which I will link up here for you guys. But this one is a game changer. It's so precise. All right, so for my setting powder, I have this Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime setting powder in the shade Light Medium. I'm gonna use a beauty blender and I'm gonna try out this technique of setting my eyebrows. Wow, right after powder application. Trying not to get any powder into my eyeshadow, which, you know, maybe I should have actually done my eyebrows before my eyeshadow. That wouldn't have ruined anything, but I'm learning as I'm going along, so don't judge me. I'm going to whisk off the remaining powder from the top of my brow bone. I'm just gonna let my brows bake. I did see some comments regarding baking the brows, so I'm gonna try out that method. I've never tried it before. I'm really excited to see what it will do to my brows. So I'm ready to remove this tape. Oh, would you look at that? Have you ever seen a more precise line. Me neither. I'm gonna remove my eye patches, thank you. Shockingly, I actually applied the tape fairly evenly, so this is looking really, really good so far. Next up, I have a lot of skin tips. So one of my favorite tips for primer came from Hina Megani, I hope I said that right. She basically uses different primers for different areas to target prime. I love that idea and I think it's genius. I have been wanting to try this method, but I'm always just trying to stick to one primer, but today is that day. I'm going to target prime. Thank you so much for your tip. So for this, I have two primers. The first one being the YSL Two Chiclet, and the second being the Smashbox Photo Finish Oil and Shine Control. So I'm gonna apply the Two Chiclet first. I'm gonna apply this primer to the outer portion of my face, basically to the lower half and the perimeter. I'm also gonna apply some to my neck. I'm gonna add a pinch more to my forehead. And I'm gonna let that sit. I feel like this primer needs to sink in a little 
little bit in order to really set. And then I'm gonna take my Smashbox oil and shine control and I'm gonna dab that just to the center of my face where I get the most oily and the most shiny. So around my nose, around the nostrils. I'm gonna kind of pat that in like that. Felipe's tip is actually something that he learned from my girl Jackie. Setting your primer, especially in the zones where you're oily. Let's do that. I'm gonna take the same Pat McGrath setting powder, Charlotte Tilbury brush. I'm gonna pick up some powder just from the lid. I know Jackie does go in a little bit heavier. Maybe I should go in heavier. Let's go in heavier. Okay, here we go. Setting those oily zones. Also gonna kind of go past my pore zones and just down the jawline where I have some breakouts. Let's set in between the brows. Cute. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is set my face. I can't seem to find the comment, but I did get the sense that a lot of people like to set this powder under foundation method. It is something that Jackie does, so I'm gonna try it. Mm, just using my MAC Fix Plus. This is from their spring collection, but it's basically the same old Fix Plus that you're used to. Now allow that to set while I look for my next tip. Okay, contouring and highlighting before foundation. Duh, so many people have been doing this lately. I feel like it's become a trend on TikTok and elsewhere. For this method, I've picked up my Fenty Beauty Matchstick and Mocha, which I've used for a long time, and I have very little left. So let's go ahead and contour. For this step, I wanna use this Wayne Goss 01 brush. It's a really large foundation stippling brush. I'm going to basically blend out this contour into my hairline. I'm gonna also blend it down my jawline and kind of around my jawline. I know a lot of people like to sharpen their jawline. I like to minimize mine because it's already so wide and so sharp. Let's blend that cheekbone. Oh man, you guys, this is gonna be a dramatic makeup look, but I am determined to make it look amazing. I've loved all of your tips. I love the fact that so many people have made submissions, even though I literally only asked you this about 20 hours ago. So I so appreciate the effort made on your part. And I definitely think it's a nice way for all of us to get involved and just take our mind off of everything that's happening right now. Gotta take a smaller brush and just blend out the smaller areas. Boom, boom. All right, and now on to the concealer. I'm gonna use my Tarte Shape Tape in light medium. I'm gonna add that to all my points of interest. Next up, I'm gonna take my Beauty Blender. Someone suggested that I should use a setting spray instead of water with my Beauty Blender. I love that idea because it will make your foundation last a little bit longer. I do this myself from time to time and it really is very smart. All right, so now that I'm getting to this area around the nose, I'm just gonna blend the product into my skin, but I'm not gonna come close to that fold between the nose and the cheek. Just gonna blend it down and then I'm gonna start another tip. Okay, so Cynthia Style MUA says that her favorite technique for getting foundations to stay on in areas that are difficult is using a paint pot. Do you guys remember one of these? Take your paint pot, just a dab will do, and put it on your nose or chin, even on major pores, blend into the skin and put your foundation on top. Your makeup won't move all day in that area. So this is a trick that she got from Nikia Joy. So I am gonna test that out. I actually replied to that comment. I said, love that, because I do. So what I'm gonna do is take my MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. This is that same Lancome smudge and liner brush. I'm gonna take the liner side, pick up a bit of that paint pot, and I'm gonna add a dab of that right here in that area that tends to separate. Also gonna add that right here, where I have a tiny little wrinkle that also always tends to separate. And let's see, major pores, I got one right here. I got another one right here. I have a couple here on my nose. I think I'm just gonna reach for that same beauty blender and blend that out. Oh snap, you guys. This is actually really, really hard to blend out. I'm not taking that as a bad thing. I'm actually taking that as a good thing because that means that it's going to stay there all day. Honestly, you can't really see the line around my nose, so I don't really mind it being there. Now I know I'm adding foundation on top, so hopefully that'll hide it some more, but I have a feeling 
that this is going to be an amazing tip. Thank you. All right, so now I'm ready to apply a little bit more concealer just because I'm feeling myself. And I actually just wanna perfect my skin underneath my foundation. So I wanna dab a little bit more of that to those areas where I'm breaking out and also use this stuff to chisel out my contour even more. We're pulling out the dramatics here and we're testing out all of these awesome tips and tricks. For my foundation, I'm gonna use NARS Barcelona. I have this like little super cute travel size foundation. I'm gonna apply that with my favorite brush. It Cosmetics Complexion Perfection. Let's add that on top of everything to seal that deal. Ooh. Am I looking flawless or what? Holy. Next up, setting spray. Setting my foundation. Oh yes, this is full coverage, honey. But my, oh my, does it look amazing on camera and in person. Actually really surprised at the fact that although this is a lot more layers than I typically apply on my face, it's not looking very cakey and it's not feeling very heavy. I'm gonna set my under eye with the Pat McGrath under eye setting powder. I'm gonna set those nasal labial folds and that area around the nose. I'm gonna set in between my brows. Okay, she is here. For my bronzer, I have the cutest tip from Christine. She actually sent me a video and I'm gonna play it for you guys. Hi Mary, I'm in Team Truth. Today bronzer I have a bronzer. You guys. So um, I use two bronzers for my routine. I start with a cool tone bronzer. This is a heavily depotted version of the sculpting bronzer from Physicians Formula. And I take my brush and I blend it into the sides of my face. And then I take a warmer tone bronzer um, like the Marc Jacobs Tantric, and I actually make, I do the wave effect over my face. Um, so I blend up here, like past my nose, and onto this side. So, um, the mixture of those two bronzers gives you the perfect sculpted, but also sun-kissed effect. So cute. Her video just like really made me smile. First of all, I love her makeup and how adorable is she? That just lifted up my whole entire mood and whole entire day. I don't have the Physician's Formula Bronzer, but I do have a, come on Beauty Blender, don't do me like that. I do have a cool sculpting bronzer from Kevin Aquan that you've seen me use in some of my other videos. And of course, I do have the warm tantric bronzer from Marc Jacobs, so I will be using that for the wave. Let's do that. I'm gonna pick up the Kevin Aquan. I'm gonna give myself just a bit of that sculpted look right here. I'm not gonna go too crazy. Just gonna dab, dab, dab right under my cheekbone. And then for the wave effect, I'm gonna pick up a much bigger brush. This one is Mr. Right from Too Faced. I'm gonna dip into that. I'm gonna add that right on top, kind of in a patting motion. Blend that out. I actually love this trick. I think this would be a perfect everyday makeup tip. I'm gonna also use that powder to set my forehead just a bit. So I'm gonna actually utilize that for those days where I'm not contouring and concealing underneath my foundation but for those everyday basic kind of days love that next up okay there's a lot of tips I can't find it but I will put it up here if I can find it basically setting every single step of your face makeup so I did it after foundation as one of you suggested now I'm gonna set my bronzer and my under eye powder and then I'm gonna apply my highlighter so same Mac fix plus I have a feeling that this face will last me all day. And now, while that's still drying, I'm gonna pick up my Ofra highlighter. This one is Glow Goals. Before the setting spray has a chance to really set, I'm gonna just glide that over the back of my cheekbone. Whoa, the camera can't focus. It's just too luminous for the camera. How good is that? Another tip that I got was from Mio Looks on Instagram, and she sent me this super cute little video of her outlining her entire mouth shape with a darker foundation, and then blending it out with a beauty blender. You guys, how sick was that before and after? I'm gonna try this. All right, so I have NARS Natural Radiant Foundation in this tiny little sample size in the shade Tahoe. I'm actually just gonna dab it with this thing here, just like that. And then I'm gonna blend it out with my Damp and Beauty Blender. I've always loved this technique, but it's not something that I've ever tried with foundation. I've always used it with a cream or some type of a sculpting product. With a foundation, it does look a lot more natural. So then when you actually apply your lip color, you'll have that nice dark border around your mouth. My own personal favorite tip is to outline the cupid's bow slightly. And then for 
my lip color today. I'm gonna reach for Artist Couture Saucy Gal. Mm, for that perfectly glam nude pout. All right, you guys, I am ready to set my brows with my brow gel, and I'm ready to complete this look. I'm gonna take Charlotte Tilbury's Bedroom Black Eyeliner, line that outer corner and connect it to the top. Same smudger brush. I'm gonna add some of this darker brown here right on top and just pushing that into the lashes so that this line is very, very precise but the lower lash line is blurred out. I'm gonna take a clean brush and blend it out a little bit more. I'm gonna add a bit more of the shimmery shade just to the center for a little bit of a pop. Nothing crazy. And then I'm gonna use the same rock and coal but an amber moon and add that to my waterline. And this is what you call a very easy peasy, but precise and dramatic smoky eye. I'm gonna take that same Stilazi brush and this very shimmery shade here, add that to the inner corner. Ooh! Also add that to my brow arch. And the last thing I'm gonna do, you guys, after I apply my mascara, I'm gonna go for the waterproof kind because non-waterproof formulas smudge on my eyes. And now for the fun part, I recently got a new liner, lash glue, lash combo in the mail. This one is from Velour Lashes, and it's basically a liquid liner that also acts as a glue for your lashes. I've seen a lot of tips on this, but I actually want to use a product that's meant for this specific step. So I'm going to use this liner to add a really thin line of liner slash glue to my top lash line. Not gonna wing it out because I don't need to. I have this very, very precise outer shadow situation. And then I'm gonna take these really cute lashes from Velour. These are called Effortless Lashes No Trim in the style Would I Lie. All right, these lashes are really, really tiny. Not for this look, so good thing I have another style here called Run the World. So I'm gonna use Run the World instead, but these do need to be cut to size, so might need to add another line of liner. Now for the moment of truth. Please don't ruin my makeup. Okay guys, I think the lore might be onto something. And I will even go as far as saying that this was easier to apply than regular glue. Someone definitely said that you can do this very thing with regular lash glue and just use lash glue as liner. But I think this is even better, you guys. Yo, my makeup is looking fire. I am ready to perform for Coachella here at home. <gasps> Chanel is in the building, you guys. Welcome. And this is my final look. I am obsessed with the way that my makeup is appearing right now. I feel like this is very, very glam, something that I don't typically do, but it looks absolutely flawless. My skin looks like silk. It looks completely even. I love the sun-kissed sort of glow, but it's also very dramatic and very upscale, I would say. There was no fallout under my smoky eye. Thank you so much for the tip. I missed the tape trick, but I am gonna bring that one back. I love the lip trick with the outlining and using a darker foundation to give yourself a little bit more definition and a little bit more volume. I feel like it's perfect for a nude lip, especially one that matches your skin tone the way that mine does right now. Love the brow trick. It's giving me those perfect but naturally sort of arched brows that I always want but can never really get. I absolutely loved all the foundation, setting spray, powder, primer tips that you guys have provided. For those, I am actually actually going to do a wear test. So let's cue in some time warping music here. Let's see how your foundation makeup tricks work after eight hours of wear. Okay guys, I'm back in the filming room and I am literally perplexed. I am observing my skin this close to the iPhone and I'm shocked at how good it looks. what I miss here? Okay. Honestly, it's been about seven hours since I first applied this method of foundation and face makeup onto my face. You can probably tell that there's been some wear on my forehead. Perhaps it's because I did use a different primer for my forehead and my forehead can get a little bit oily, especially with this many layers of foundation, contour, concealer, and everything else that I applied on. But overall, I would say my skin looks really, really flawless and amazing. You can 
barely see my pores and I am literally super, super, super close to the phone. You can see just some pores over here and some acne scars, but overall, it's really not bad at all. You can clearly tell that my eyeshadow has worn off in the crease, but my foundation? My foundation game is staying strong, you guys. I am seriously really pleasantly surprised and I'm impressed. I am impressed with all of the tips that you've provided me with. I am so, so excited to have learned from all of your tips and techniques and I'm so happy to be sharing them here with the rest of you on my YouTube channel. I just feel like this was a really, really successful video. I am definitely going to take some of these tips and tricks and I'm going to continue using them. I'm gonna continue utilizing them, talking about them, sharing all of them here on my channel. For that, I wanna thank you guys and and also, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Check out some of my other videos right here. Hit that subscribe button if you aren't subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next one.